In this episode of the After Walk Inspire, we will walk through some of Lightroom's masking features. I'm going to show you how to edit the photo to bring attention to the subject through range masks in Adobe Lightroom. Let's get started. What's up guys, it's John. So the personal photo assignment that I did with Caroline in Hong Kong, that one that I review lenses, turns out great. The video was great because you guys told me so. So I can't thank you enough for the words of encouragement that you left at my comment section. Now that I'm back in my studio, I'm working on this photograph, preparing it for prints. If you guys work on Lightroom and if you haven't heard about range masks, you are in for a treat. I've selected a couple of photos to show you guys how to use range masks to drive attention to the subject. In this case, Caroline. Let's dive in. So firstly, I've got about 700 over photos over here in the entire collection. And I've selected about 20 odd photos which I want to be featured in whatever platform there is. My idea is to see if I can make a photo scene out of this. Now masking is a technique that we use to select part of the photo and manipulate it. Now in this case, I'm selecting Caroline and whatever in red is the part where I've selected. And once I've selected, I could just turn off the indicator and start manipulating parts of the photo that I've selected. With that said, there are a few shots that I can show how I use Lightroom to prepare the photos for print. So this photograph, it's exposed relatively correct. Almost nothing needed to be done. But it's just one rule in photography. Our eye is drawn towards a brighter part of the image. And in this case, the background is slightly a little bit brighter than Caroline herself, the subject. So I'm going to do is for every single image, I'm just going to apply my color presets. It's even more apparent now since the preset is applied. The background is really overexposed while she is slightly overexposed. So I'm just going to bring down the exposure a little bit. I want to be making sure that the subject is uh, correctly exposed. I'm just going to add a simple mask to mask out the background so that I can bring the exposure of the background just a tiny bit. So a gradial mask over here, if I were to click this button over here, it shows the red color area where the mask is going to be affected. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a simple brush now and do a simple erase and make sure that auto mask is on. I could adjust the size of my brushes through my click view on my mouse and then start to brush her off from the mask because we don't want her to be selected. The auto mask is very good in terms of um, detecting edges in the photograph. That way I could just easily mask off the subject from the background. So that's pretty simple. And once I'm done with that, I'll just uncheck this one to show how the background is going to be and I'll probably just bring down the exposure by 0.5, half a stop to match the same exposure with the subject itself. So here we've got the before and after. I applied my 2019 preset and did a little bit of exposure correction on the background using gradient mask. Now the tweak was very little. Correcting the background exposure by a tiny bit improves the photo. Whenever we photograph, we do place the subject on a brighter spot because easily our eyes are driven to the brighter part in the photograph. But in this case, I'm just happy that the frame is evenly exposed. Okay, this photo is a little bit difficult to expose. The subject is in the shadow while there is a lot of details outside in the environment which is a different exposure altogether. I hope I did a decent job in exposing this shot. The dynamic range of the EOS 5D Mark III is great. The way I see it, I'll start off with applying my color presets. It gives me a good gauge where my final outcome is going to be. So in my JLS 2019 preset, when I apply it, it does bring out the shadow at the same time crunch down the highlight a little bit. As you can see behind there, it's still a little bit too bright. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball the exposure out of the window over here. So I'm just going to bring down maybe about half a stop. Once I do that, and you can see the subject over here is a little bit underexposed. Um, and since the light is coming from over here by the window, I'm going to add a gradient mask 
and you can see that's how the whole entire thing is going to be affected i could also just use the brush and erase as how i did earlier but there's an easier way to do it so the range mask is going to assist us to select certain part of the photograph based on either color or luminosity and in this example i'm just going to be selecting luminosity and with the color picker over here i'm going to pick a range of color just closer to the subject perhaps about there i'm going to click on the option on my mac and when i move this slider the white part of the area will be the places where the mask is going to be applying on okay about there i'm going to turn off the mask overlay and start to bring up my exposure now i can see a little bit highlight over here that's a little bit different from here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go back to the mask and again i just go back to brush erase make sure the auto mask is on and start erasing this part okay and when i do that this looks natural what i'm going to try to also crop is to make sure my composition falls onto her face and her eye to respect the composition ratio and there you go but one thing though it is a little bit warm here so what I'm, i could do is i can do another mask okay and this time range mask dominance and instead of dropping the eye drop over at my subject i'm going to drop it over here i'm going to show luminance mask and you can see over here which is i can fine tune how much of it i want to to select so anything white will hit and i'm just going to totally bring in close that way okay and then i'm going to just uncheck the luminance mask again and maybe unwarm make it a little bit cooler you can see when i pull it all the way through it matches the outdoor over here a little bit more that way it looks more natural to give you a comparison at the end of the day this is how it looks like before and after with luminance range mask we can easily select part of the photograph with the same amount of luminosity in other words similar brightness works especially great if you want to do sky and foreground separation i've got this image over here which is partially edited but i want to show you how range mask work for colors there's a building with brick bricks behind here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a simple gradient filter um, just high enough and doesn't affect the face of the model and come down to range mask color and my eyedropper tool to select the red bricks i'm going to hold on to my option key on my mac and then play with this slider to bring towards the to just select the bricks white color is the selection um, and from there i could manipulate the contrast the exposure um, anything to bring out the color a little bit more my goal is actually to make it a little bit um, darker so then the subject pops out a little bit more okay so that's how you can use range mask for color this is before and after to zoom in I've enhanced the color of the red brick a little and that's how you use range mask for color color range mask as the name suggests allow us to select shades of similar color tone in the photograph for example if you have a bunch of green trees and you want to change the leaves to autumn colors you can do so easily with color range mask now here's a last hack that is a little bit unorthodox but i think it's very very useful so in this photo i'm going to improve the texture of caroline's um, complexion to start off her complexion is almost perfect already uh, i don't really need to work a lot on her complexion but i could just smoothen it just a tiny bit to give the pop in a photo 
in Lightroom, texture will affect the softness of the photo. You can see if I were to apply maximum um, at negative 100, you could see the skin totally soften up. And when you apply that, that the whole entire image soften up and it doesn't look good. So I'm just going to reset that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new mask just over at the face. I want to put the circular bound as close as, as tight on the face. Okay, I'm just going to show you where the selection is. So the red here represent where the, select, the mask selection is. I want to bring down the feather. I just want it to affect like closely without feathering the side. Okay, and after that, this is where I can apply the range mask under luminosity, luminance. Okay, and if I were to just do a color pick and select her skin tone to give a good start, and I can do the micro adjustment by clicking option to see the black and whites. The black is not the selection, the white is the selection. The eyebrow, the eyeballs, the lips are not selected. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to off the mask um, indicator and go to texture and bring it down to maybe about 50. Okay, if I were to do a before and after comparison, there you go. So I just improved the complexion just a tad more smoother. I hope this little Lightroom trickeries will help you in improving your photography game. Now, if you haven't watched the episode of The Afterworld that features me and Caroline in Hong Kong reviewing lenses, click right here. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys on the next one.